We have Lisa Frank here, uh, who was uh, uh, Mayor Ganey's uh, campaign chair uh, and is now working in the mayor's office and would like to talk to her about what's happening on the city level. And of course, in addition to making sure that uh, there's access to, to the ballot and that the ballot is, is verifiable, people have to go out and, and fill them out. Uh, Lisa Frank, could you talk a little bit about uh, lessons that you learned in this last campaign about ensuring that people get out to, uh, to fill out these ballots in the first place? To fill out the ballots in the first place? Um... So that's a tough question. I'm, I, I'm trained as a historian. I tend to take a long view on things. Um, if you ask people, you know, who here would like to have uh, better health care, universal health care, have more sort of security? If you ask people in the country that, you know, something like 79% of people uh, raise their hands. If you ask people in the country, how many people here think that everybody who puts in a hard day's work deserves a living wage? Everybody puts up their hand. You know, if you ask people that the ideas, let's say, that, that Democrats, let's say, support, are generally uh, more popular than the ideas uh, Republicans support. And yet there is endless research that shows that the policy preferences of a small minority of people who tend to be wealthier, who tend to be whiter, who tend to be um, men uh, prevail in our country, right? And so how does that happen in a place that is allegedly democratic? Well, there are all kinds of institutions that exist to impede people's access, not just to the vote, right? Because the vote is supposed to be your gateway to the enactment of your policy preferences. And I think it's important to remember that when we talk about restrictions on the vote is that um, some people, some people are gonna get uh, animated about the means to the end. But in my experience, what people really want to talk about is the end. What their people are interested in is their lives and the kind of policy preferences. And people have to believe that voting is a means to that. And, and that's that's a belief that depends on a whole variety of things, including what I sort of like to call deliverism. You know, if you if you vote for something and that something comes to you, then you start to have faith in democracy, you start to have faith in the voting system. That's an important kind of piece of the of, of this puzzle from my point of view. Um, you know, and voting, uh, uh, restricting the technology of voting in all the ways that Senator Costa talked about is, is important to that. Voter ID is important to that. Um, uh, my union, I used to work for SEIU, uh, ran the field that uh, produced the evidence that showed that the state couldn't actually handle its free ID and, and help to knock that law out. Those things are really, really important, but it's also really, really important that we remember what happens in the four years between uh, let's say presidential votes or the two years between congressional votes or state house votes and that, you know, we have to also be working on, uh, let's say, um, cultivating a constituency for the democratic project. And there are lots and lots of people in our country who have just stopped believing in that. I think voter turnout shows you um, something of, of that. And I think the rise of a, of a um, resentful uh, working class that you know is, is, is part of that. So I'm saying all that because I think that's one of the things that, that I uh, learned, I guess, or um, uh, believe uh, you know, through the campaigns that I've been part of, in particular the Ganey campaign, and that I'm um, most interested in right now is uh, where's Karen? I'm going right back to something that she said. You know, there's a there's a kind of difference between hope and fear. You know, hope is not there's not an infinite reservoir of hope. You 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 uh, inspire people to be helpful, hopeful, and then and then you gotta try to make it so. Um, so that, as I say, we're developing a constituency for this project called democracy instead of a, 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 a country of people who are at best kind of futile about what it means to vote, um, but who have excitement about voting because voting is your ticket to seeing um, things in the world be the, you, the way you, you, you want them to be. Does that make sense? I think that's what the Ganey campaign was. I think the Ganey campaign was a conversation with people who, um, had uh, checked out of the democratic process for a while and decided to check in 
And I think we have a covenant with them to see if we can do some of the things that uh, they are interested in doing. So I would encourage people as you are fighting for these very, very important things, there should not be a voter ID law. We need to have mail-in ballots. We need to have drop-off boxes. We need to have uh, pre-canvassing. We need to have all those things to continue to fight for those things, to also make sure that you are doing the work of partnering with other people in your community to help help uh, deliver the things that they really uh, care about and that they um, that they voted to make so so that uh, as the as from cycle to cycle we're we're um, building uh, to removing obstacles not just to voting but to the um, uh, obstacles to, to enacting the policy preferences that people uh, go to vote for in the first place. Lisa not to interrupt you I just want to say I love those posts from Ed Ganey Good morning, community. So you can see this whole messaging around how he's building and wants to continue to build and strengthen the community. And that repetition is so important. So that makes me happy in the morning when I see that either on Twitter or Facebook. Just wanted to say that. 